can Memphis win the AAC in 2023? This is a program that has had a ton of success under Justin Fuente and Mike Norvell. Now, Ryan Silverfield has not experienced that same success, but he has done a good job of bringing talent in. It's just a matter of translating that to the field. This is a team that is entering a new conference, even though it's the same one that they were in last year. It's a new look conference, and there's talent on this team that can make a run. It's just a matter of can they find themselves back at the top of the conference when the season ends. Non-conference schedule is interesting. Not necessarily the first two games because those should be two wins, although Arkansas State has provided plenty of challenges for Memphis in the past, so keep an eye on that game for sure. The Navy game obviously will be tricky too, so you can't really get caught look, looking past that game playing a triple option team will give you plenty of fits if you find a way to be three and oh then you get a missouri team in st louis which is one of the more intriguing games to me you have an aac team facing an sec team at a neutral location i'm kind of surprised that missouri would agree to that but i'm really excited to see what these teams look like missouri is a team that could be much better in 2023 memphis is a team that could be much better in 2023 this is a huge game and when you look at what fuente and norvell were able to do specifically norvell norvell was able to beat sec opponents he was able to beat power five opponents they find ways to elevate his team in that game and if silverfield can do that i feel confident about where this program is headed under him if not though then you have to start answering some questions now the week after is the game after excuse me they get two weeks to prepare for this is no joke either because you're looking at excuse me they get one week you get boise state a week after you play missouri now boise state is not missouri but this is a team that's super talented and is going to be competing for a mountain west championship competing for that new year's six spot that is going to be a really fun game two back-to-back -back games that you're looking at that are really exciting from a group of five standpoint but just in college football in general i think those are two of the more exciting games that people probably aren't talking about the week after that Again, no, no breaks there. This is the two-week break, actually. You get Tulane at home. Now you get two weeks to prepare, but this is the defending champs of the AAC. You have to find a way to knock them off of the, their pedestal, knock them off of the top, take their crown from them. Memphis has a lot of opportunities to showcase what they can do. They can really just put their name back on the map. This is a Memphis team that hasn't done that under Ryan Silverfield. I think that they need to get it back on track. And this is the team that can do it. When we talk about the personnel here in a little bit, there's no reason why Memphis shouldn't be at the top of the AAC when it's all said and done. This is a team that can definitely be there. A trips to UAB in North Texas to newcomers of the conference. Those will be interesting. How does a Memphis team handle those kinds of games? Do they handle them um, efficiently and how I think they should, where they should win those games handily i i think that that's where they should go that's where they should be but we don't really know and then usf at home at charlotte again those two teams you should win those games but again memphis has to take that step forward a team that will com be competing for an aac championship is smu that's going to be a tough game but it is at home finishing the year at temple a team that could be a sleeper team in 2023 again Memphis struggled in the past with Temple, even under Norvell and Fuente. This is a team that always gives them trouble. So if they're successful this year, that is still a game that they need to take seriously, a, a game that they need to find ways, especially on the road. They've always struggled on the road at Temple. They need to find a way to elevate their game to prove that they're the better team. But again, Temple could be a sneaky good team in 2023. Now, the personnel, it all starts with Seth Hennigan. I did a little bit of a breakdown on Seth Hennigan and what he brings to the table. And I think that he is someone who can take a step forward. And when it's all said and done, could be the leading passer in Memphis football history. Now, the talent around him is not lacking either. When you look at, they brought in Blake Watson to a running back group that is going to be extremely talented, extremely deep. That group is going to be fun to watch. Offensive line should be fine, even if they have to replace a couple people. And then the receivers also have some talent too. Joseph Skates averaged almost 23 yards per catch. If they can get him more than 18 catches, 
I think that you're looking at someone who could be the best wide receiver in the conference. They get Corey Gamage from Marshall. That's a huge addition for them. And you have other guys coming in as well. And then some returners, such as guys like Rock Taylor. Rock Taylor could take a step forward in 2023. Someone that I think is flying under the radar in terms of the AAC, but someone who I, again, I really like and could be really, really good. Then you flip over to the defensive side of the ball. You're looking at a front seven that's going to be a problem. And I think that that's huge for a Memphis team that in the past has struggled defensively. Now, I don't think this is going to be a dominant group, but I do believe they have the talent to make a tremendous impact on this team and in this conference. Jalen Allen is one of my favorite players coming into 2023. He is extremely explosive, extremely disruptive, and he's not the only one in the front seven that's going to make some noise. Kamonte Hamilton, the former Ohio State transfer, had a solid year in 2022. And you're looking at William Whitlow Jr., who probably lines up opposite of of Allen on the other side, and he had a solid season as well. Then the linebackers are, are really good. I think there's some sleeper picks in that group as well. The secondary. I think has some talent, even with the loss to Quindell Johnson, you're looking at plenty of talent. Uh, again, one of the things that we can commend Ryan Silverfield for is his ability to bring in talent. He brought in a lot of talented players from the transfer portal, from recruiting, and we're starting to see it all come to fruition, come to, to a head here. And you're seeing that this group has the talent to do it. It's just a matter of taking that step forward, translating that talent to production. And I, I know that they can do it. It's just a matter of Brian Silverfield and his staff getting that team to do that. This is a team that should compete for an AAC championship. That should be the expectation this year. If it's not, then obviously things need to change. But this should be the expectation. There's no reason why they can't. Some of the teams that give them trouble in the past are still going to be there, but some of them have departed. You look at some of the good teams like UCF, Cincinnati, Houston in the past. Those three are gone. Now you get a chance to take over the top of the conference and you have the talent to do that. Ryan Silverfield has done a great job recruiting. It's just a matter of getting into the field. I think Memphis is poised to make a run, to make some noise once again. And if they can do that under Ryan Silverfield, then this program is just proven that they can just get another coach. They know how to pick their coaches and that coach can take them to new heights again or get them back to where they once were under the previous regimes.